Okay, this is a retake of a video that I did a few months ago. IP multicast using VLC. We're going to try and get through this in a one take, so hopefully not too much will go wrong. Um, I set up the lab yesterday, so we're going to walk this through. I've got um, VMware Fusion running on the Mac, and um, wait, let me pull up this. Um, I want to say Visio, but it's not Visio. I did yesterday. All right, this is what we're going to try and do. Um, you can see I've got this uh, physical machine, it's the Mac Mini on my desk here, and it's going to be running VLC. And then on the Mac Mini, I've got VMware Fusion, and inside VMware Fusion, I've got a Windows 10 VM and uh, EVNG uh, VM. And then inside EVNG VM, I've got a nested uh, Ubuntu desktop also. So. <clears throat> three machines in, in total, physical Mac Mini, virtual Windows 10 running under VMware, virtual Eve with a nested Ubuntu. All right, then inside Eve NG, I've got these four virtual routers, um, Cisco routers, and they are pre-configured with IP addressing and OSPF is all running. There are four loopbacks on each device and we're configured with uh, sparse mode and a bootstrap router. So uh, this will just be a spin up of the VM. Uh, we'll walk through some of the configuration that I did. We'll, uh, we'll then stream a video and uh, do some debugs and that sort of thing. But all, all of the configuration files will be available uh, in the comments section of the, of the video anyway. So you can, uh, you can drag those off and uh, install them on your own desktop as you want. All right, so let's first of all, uh, you know, I'll just take you through the virtual network configuration on the Fusion. It's quite a simple thing, but uh, under VMware Fusion, you have under preferences options to add new networks, virtual networks. So I added one called Media. It's not shared by any devices except the Windows 10 VM and the EVNG VM. So under VMware Fusion itself, uh, the traffic cannot leak out of that uh, system. So. Um, you can, the way you do this, you, you, you click on the security um, tab there. Let's get the password right. Okay, you can then you can add like a like a, you can you can rename this as well. You don't have to call it that, so we'll call it test whatever. And then on the 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 settings here, you can make it sh either share the physical network of the of the Mac that I'm on, or you can share uh, the Mac with it, so the Mac can connect to it, which I didn't want. And you can also create. Um, a virtual scope inside VMware to issue IP addresses again, which I didn't want. So that's that's kind of how to create a new virtual network, but no need for this for this one. I already created one called Media. All right, but the same situation. So it's not shared with the Mac. It's not shared with um, anything on this physical host at all. It's all inside VMware. So that's that. That's all I did there. And then under uh, the virtual machine, the Windows 10 virtual machine, under the network adapter settings, you can see that the interface, the network interface is connected to media. And um, under EVNG, under the lab, when I open this up, you'll see that there are these um, clouds. Um, this cloud is connected to the Mac. Uh, and this cloud is connected to the um, that media, the media LAN that you just saw there under VMware Fusion. So these are the two like network connections. Uh, this one leads only to the Windows 10 instance, and this one leads to the Mac just for um, sharing the Mac's physical interface. And also, if I wanted to, I could, I could put like NAT on R1 and go out to the internet and things like that. But just for the sake of this exercise, all of these devices are, are self-contained and there's no there's no leaking. So Mac into EVNG out of the AVNG into uh, the VM of Windows 10, that's it. So what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna spin this up. Like I say, I've already pre-configured it. Uh, R3 and R4 are the BSRs. Um, R3 has the higher priority, so he'll be uh, the principal BSR, um, and the RP as well. For this uh, for this group, 239.255.00 slash 16. Um, I left this R4 on the default, so it'll be advertising the full uh, multicast, multicast subnet 224.0.0.0 slash 4. Uh, but no, no, no real configuration issues. OSPF's already running. 
anyway, let's get it started. So we'll just split up all the nodes while we're waiting. I'll forward it. Okay, so I guess let's uh, let's take it from now. So we've started all the nodes. I've also got a, a VNC connection to the Linux host, which is running inside um, inside EVNG. So it's a nested VM. I've got Windows running, uh, Windows VM running here. Um, it should get an IP address uh, from inside uh, EVNG, which it has. So uh, 192.168.4.1 is my gateway, and it's got the DHCP address 192.168.4.16. Let me just uh, 192.168.4.1. That's my gateway. So this, so the Windows 10 host is pinging R4. This is the Linux host. Let's see if this has a DHCP address as well. So it should get 192.168.3. Something. That's ping 3.1. That's fine. Um, can we ping 1.1.1.1, which is R1? Whoops. If I type it right, hopefully you can. 1.1.1.1. Um, now the Linux, uh, sorry, the Mac, the Mac host itself has no has no routes yet. So we need to just on the uh, on the Mac also add some paths back into the EVNG cloud. So route add minus net 192.168.3.0. Um, slash 24 by 192.168.32.2454 wait I think that's R1 one second I did this yesterday so I'm pretty sure that's right <coughs> yeah so on, our, on, on R1 I have uh, Ethernet 0 with this IP address this is the one facing the Mac so we're going to put that gateway in there uh, it's okay so I didn't reboot my Mac since yesterday so it's already got those routes in that's good. So we should be able to ping the Windows 10 host from um, from here. Let's do that. Ping 4.16. And the Linux host is 3.16. So we have reachability from the Mac uh, via this local LAN into R1. Um, and then we can ping Linux. And we can also ping Windows. Well, whichever path it's taken, that's what it can do. Right, but this is about multicast. So what we want to do is use the Mac to generate a multicast stream. And uh, I have a video on desktop from when I went back home last year called Loop. Um, and if I haven't rebooted my Mac, which it looks like I haven't, I should have this in my history. So I'm just going to find that real quick. This one. Okay. So we're going to run VLC. We're going to pull this loop.mp4 into, uh, into this stream. We're going to transcode that to change the size because it's quite a, a big file. And we're only running a lab, so it's going to kill all the bandwidth and kill all the CPU. So I want to transcode that, make it a bit smaller, um, and stream that out. So let's just pull VLC. Okay, there's the video. All right, let's pause that. I'm not sure if this. <laughs> screen recordings taking all the sound in but I'll have to cut that out because it's way too loud all right um, so now on the Linux on the Linux host let's pull up um, let's pull up the Linux host all right VLC now what I'm doing um, just to go over this code again what we're doing here on this um, command prompt is the destination is going to be 239.255.01 that's the multicast destination address and the port 5001 so on VLC we want to be calling that port. Let's just go to R1. Well, let's do some. Let's do some basic homework first. All right. So on R1, show IP PIM interfaces. This shows me all the interfaces that PIM's bound on. Uh, remember we've we just configured BSR routing, so we're running uh, version two PIM uh, in sparse mode. Uh, neighbors. I've got neighbors from uh, over Ethernet. 0, 01 and 0, 02, which lead to R2 and R3, but I don't have any PIM neighbors on on the Ethernet interface there, which is which is right. There are no there are no routers outside there. Show IPM route shows all the things that we know, um, and you can see in here it's already learned via IGMP. Um, this source address this is the MAC 192.168.32.10, and you can see the destination IP. 239.255.01 and that was the 
destination of the multicast video that we just started off on the prompt. So you can see it's already so our one's already picking up this stream. It's not sending it anywhere. That's why the output the the OIL is is null at the moment because it's not sending that anywhere. There are no clients on the LAN wishing to participate in that video stream. So let, what I suggest we do we start the stream. Um, we then connect to the stream on the Ubuntu host, and then reissue this command. We should start seeing some uh, some interface on this uh, OIL there. So let's just minimize that. Start the stream. Oh wait, let me already start the stream. Let me just unpause the stream. Now I'm not sure if you can still hear me, but um, we've got the stream running, and we've got the capture also picking that up. Now it's on a loop, so every time that stops, the stream also stops. So we've got a bit of both going on there. Um, let's go back to the, uh, the the PTY, and now under R1 we should hopefully have an OIL, which we do. Uh, it's forwarding out through Ethernet zero two. So Ethernet zero two on the map points out to R3, which makes sense. The Linux host is receiving this stream. So on R3, <coughs> Sharpie and Pinterest faces, you can see all these interfaces are bound. Again, neighbor count only across the, the, the land links there. Sharpie Emerald shows you the source, the Mac server there, the destination. Um, and you can see it's leading out through Ethernet 00, zero which uh, which points at the Linux node. So that's all that's all good. Um, so that's one stream. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go to Windows now. Uh, there's the origin. Let's close this down. Where's the Windows? Let's pull up VLC. So this is the original. This is the Ubuntu. Let's also open the stream 239.255.01.5001. And there we go. So, source and two clients Windows 10 and Ubuntu. The Windows 10 is a bit messed up, video artifacts everywhere, but um, it's working. It's a VM, for goodness sake, can't expect the world, can we? All right, um, what else can we do? Let's go back to the prompt. Let's just pause this now. Oh no, let's leave it running. Let's go back to the prompt. Let's see what's happening on R4. So Windows 10 is, point, is uh, bound to R4. Sharpie M route shows an outlawing on um, Ethernet 00 again, which is pointing at R4, um, Windows 10 host. Incoming through Ethernet 01, which is from R2. So that's all good. Uh, so there you go. Uh, thanks for thanks for watching. Actually, one other thing we can do is uh, kill the network. So what if we have a catastrophic event between R3 and R4? The traffic's coming this way right now. Let's go to R3. Let's shut down Ethernet interface 01. What about what about the route table now? What's it what's it look like? Uh show IPM route. Alright. <coughs> so as far as R3 is concerned, nothing's happened. But R4 incoming space now is Ethernet 2. Uh, so via R2. Uh, so that all that all works beautifully.